unknown to Big Mom, two people witnessed what happened on that day when Mother Caramel disappeared. The warrior giant from Elbath and a ruined pirate, Struson. And with the way the chapter starts off, it basically kind of confirms that the children did get eaten alive and so did Mother Caramel. That's basically what the beginning of this chapter clarifies. And I feel like the reason why it won't be shown is because, you gotta remember, this is a shonen. It's in, you know, a magazine that doesn't normally show that level of dark stuff, that dark content. So obviously, we wouldn't see something like that. And that's why it's just implied with this chapter. But overall, though, the two people that witnessed this... It really adds an interesting dynamic to Big Mom's character because Big Mom, she is someone that's completely unaware after all of these years, after 60 plus years, she still is completely unaware of what happened. She doesn't really know. She thought she was abandoned by Mother Caramel and it was like her previous parents. She thought she was abandoned and so she wanted to make a country, a dream country, peace and all that for she would eventually return, the, you know, the kids, her family would return and all that. That's what she was doing. And she was unaware of anything of what really happened. And so the warrior, which really loved the lamb house and all that, he saw this and he just ran the fuck away. He's like, I'm, uh -uh. I, I, what I just saw was just messed up. And so he ran off back to, you know, the main homeland of the giants, Elbath. He told all of them and basically they found out the truth about Linlin, how, you know, her name is just very repulsive and, you know, never speak of her ever again because of just how dangerous she is. While the person Struson, a ruined pirate, he also witnessed everything and this man like okay let, let's just talk about this character real quick Struson. this man straight up watches bing mom as a child like five years old or whatever eat okay or actually six technically she had a birthday so maybe six years old he sat there and watched big mom devour this big cake but then devour the children and mother caramel and then was completely unaware of what happened and after all those screams and everything that most likely happened the man just sits there and he's just laughing his ass off he's just sitting there laughing and all that and he wants to confront her and actually help her out i'm like this man, like, what in the hell? This man must have a screw loose or something. I mean, he's sitting here confronting someone that just devoured children, devoured Mother Caramel, and he's just laughing. This man doesn't even tell her what happens. He just straight up lies to her, and he helps her out and all that. It's just like, yo, what? So, basically, Struzan, this man is... This man just wants to watch the world burn in a, in a way. Because, I mean, for the man just to sit there and watch that... But then walk up to someone like Big Mom and just talk to her. That's like a very ballsy move. But then to be with her for 60 plus years, it just proves that this man was probably not a good influence on Big Mom at all. And you can easily see from his personality in this chapter of how he probably raised Big Mom. So let's look at that for a second. Big Mom, when she was still a kid, she told this dude Struson, hopefully I'm saying his name right, she told Struson about her ambitions, her dream, what she wanted to accomplish, what she believed in. For instance, she wanted to be able to sit eye to eye with people. For instance, everybody be the same height as her. But also, she wanted to make peace. She wanted to have a peaceful country, a peaceful island. That's what she wanted. So, looking at, you know, Big Mom's dreams and ambitions, it wasn't something that was truly negative. Even after everything we've seen, after what she has done, especially with the last chapter, the beginning of this chapter, and then previous arcs and all of that, what we have seen Big Mom actually do, we know she's a monster. But we gotta remember that at that point in time, for her to say something like that, it was very noble. Because we gotta remember she wasn't really aware of what was happening around her. She wasn't aware of what she was capable of or what she was doing, because she never had a proper person in her life trying to you know, take her down the proper path. And Struson was the third parent that Big Mom finally achieved. For instance, the first parents that banned her and they couldn't do anything, which I've already discussed that enough, so I'm not going to go into that. And then Mother Caramel, which wasn't also a good influence as well, and then that turned Big Mom down an improper path too. But then after that was over, after Mother Car Caramel was devoured or just disappeared, basically Struson picked up the mantle of the parent. He now was the father figure in Big Mom's life. And now that he was her father figure, since she was at such a young age, he was able to manipulate her. He was able to do things that, you know, normally wouldn't be possible if someone had, you know, a, 
a proper sense on morals or right and wrong, and Big Mom didn't have that, so he was able to mess with Big Mom, manipulate her into a way to where he could turn her into what she is now, a Yonko, and turn her into Big Mom, you know, the captain of the Big Mom Pirates, and so basically he is the cause for Big Mom's personality after all of these years. He is the reason why Big Mom has such a warped perspective on what she wants. For instance, when she wants something, if you don't give what she wants, she'll kill you. It's thanks to this man as to why she acts like she does. She already didn't have, like, a proper upbringing thanks to the two previous experiences with parents, but now it's Struzan holding the reins for 60 plus years, it made it to where he corrupted her. He corrupted her ambitions. He corrupted her dream. He twisted her in a way to where she wouldn't have been like that. I mean, if she would have been in, you know, the presence of Mother Caramel or her original parents, she probably still would have ended up pretty bad. But it most likely wouldn't have been as bad if she didn't go with Struzan. So, she would have been with, you know, Mother Caramel and she never got sold off or whatever. Or if, you know, she was with her original parents, she might not have been as bad as she is now. But thanks to Struzan is why... Why she acts like she does so we have finally clarification to what happened and why she acts still like she does she never grew up she is a child that had these beautiful dreams this beautiful ambition and it was completely corrupted and destroyed thanks to this pirate that manipulated her and that ha is what has happened to her and it's very sad because I know in a way, Big Mom, you can't really forgive some of the things she's done. There's just a limit. There, there's a limit to where you can't really forgive certain things. Even if you don't have the proper sense of right and wrong, I pity Big Mom, but I don't forgive her for what she has done. Because she has done a lot of atrocious things. But at the end of the day, we gotta remember it's thanks to Struzan that caused all of these things. That caused her to act like this. But... None of that. Let's talk about the warrior of Elbaf that went back to the island and told everybody about Big Mom and what happened. So, according to our understanding, and what I gathered from this chapter, is that the giants know what happened to Mother Caramel. They're, they're very aware of what Big Mom did to the children, Mother Caramel, and all that. They're very aware, and after all of that... That they basically just never wanted to speak to her ever again. They had this hatred for her because of that. And that makes me very curious, because if all of the giants know about this, why didn't they ever mention this to Big Mom? I mean, that's something I'm very curious about. You'd think they would have mentioned that to her when, you know, they were doing that wedding. Like, they were setting up that marriage between Big Mom's child, Lola, and also Loki. You'd think that they would have mentioned something about that, but they didn't, which is very... Peculiar when you think about it, and it had me thinking for a second. Loki. Loki. Think about what happened. The name. Loki in mythology, he's a trickster. He's a trickster god. He is someone that causes mischief. He's someone that messes with people. He's someone that makes it where people, you know, have trage tragedy befall them. That's basically the type of person Loki is in mythology, what he does to others. And... I was thinking about this like, Loki, he's been mentioned quite a few times already, we haven't really got to see him, but he's been mentioned, and we know he was the prince that Lola was supposed to marry, and the thing is, is we know something happened where the giants backed off, they cancelled the marriage, like we know Lola just ran away, they cancelled the marriage, they were done, and we could probably look at this a little bit differently now. For the giants to go out of their way to talk to Big Mom, that's very interesting, because you'd think they wouldn't want to talk to her to begin with after what happened with Mother Caramel. Because they personally don't know what B Mother Caramel was really like. They don't know that she was a slave trader. They have no idea. So they're looking at it as if she was a, a perfect person that was like a saint and could do no wrong. And after what, you know, Lin Lin did, they were just disgusted with her. So you think they wouldn't want to talk to her. But even then, they decided to set up a marriage. Which automatically rings a couple of flags, like there's just something off with that. But then, going one step further, we have to remember that most likely Loki, since the name is very important, he most likely knows the truth as well. He most likely knows the truth about what happened to Mother Caramel, what Lin Lin is capable of. And most likely, he was probably going to say something to Big Mom. I could definitely see something like that happening. For instance, since the name is just so obvious, and I could see Loki trying to do something crusty, and he was trying to tell Big Mom or something, or set something up. Maybe he was trying to throw Lola under the bus or something, or throw a certain person under the bus, and maybe that is why Lola backed off, why she ran away. 
away is because she didn't want Big Mom to know the truth. Because if Big Mom knew the truth, in all honesty, it might not help her. It probably still wouldn't help her even if she knew the truth. Because someone that's already gone that far and done so many heinous things like she has already done, to learn the truth... That might actually just set her even further over the edge. It, she might just acknowledge that she is a monster. It wouldn't be redeemable at all. I mean, that's a possibility. She was like, oh, I guess I am a monster and all that. And then just start attacking everyone. I mean, who knows? We, we don't know what Big Mom would do if she found out the truth. And maybe that is why Lola ran away. It's because since the Giants knew about this, most likely Lola heard about it and she didn't want Big Mom to know. And then she ran the fuck away or something else was set up. Maybe Loki was doing some crusty stuff and that's kind of why that happened, why the Giants just backed off. Who knows? Or maybe there was an assassination plan. Think about it. Maybe there was. And maybe that's why, you know, Lola backed off too. Think about it. So when you look at all of this, there's something very shady with the marriage now when it comes to Lola and the Giants. Something just does not add up at all. It does not add up. There's something off with that story. I don't know exactly what it is, but if I had to ping anything, it would definitely be Loki. Because if you know anything about Loki's mythology, you know what he crusty shit he does, and that just rings out, and it just stands out like that has to be something there. Like, there has to be something wrong with Loki's character, where he causes something between the Giants and Big Mom. But anyways, enough with that. Let's talk about Struzen for a second, okay? So Struzen's devil fruit ability, he's able to make anything, any object, into food, which is a very powerful ability actually it's a very powerful ability because if you're stranded don't have any food you can make food that that's a really great ability to have it really is it's a strong ability maybe not like power strong like for instance beating the shit out of people but being able to create food and all that like that that's a really strong ability especially when you're working with someone like big mom so this man has the perfect devil fruit ability to work with big mom which is very interesting when you think about it just like normally if he was a part of a crew or something he might not be that important but thanks to the big mom pirates and what she is about he is the best person she could possibly have because of what he is capable of so that's really cool i like how oda kind of did that with his character but yeah anyway struzen's still a piece of shit for what he did oh my god i i can't believe this man is just in it for you know shits and giggles basically after the children got eaten in front of him he's just watching the world burn and the man's like the Joker, pretty much. So, anyways, talking about the, you know, present timeline, okay? So, enough with, you know, the flashbacks and stuff. Let's talk about what happened towards the end. So, the plan has failed. Plan has completely failed. It, it's, it's over. Basically, the rockets didn't work because they exploded when Big Mom was screaming and all that. Her screams just destroyed the rockets said they couldn't do anything and then their escape plan to go through the mirror the mirror was completely destroyed so yeah it, it's not good basically they're on a rooftop they're they're on a rooftop so they're kind of like on this little plateau to where they can't really leave and they're completely surrounded by a bunch of big moms you know like pirates but also top officials from the underground world so when you look at all of these little things they're not in a good position right now like it's not good at all i mean when the mirror breaks the rockets get destroyed plant failed when you see you know capone's face you see luffy's face nami's face chopper's face even jimbe's face like this man even showed like a look of where he's like oh fuck like like the man's face was like oh like the man looks like like oh man we're not gonna sleep well tonight that, that's basically the face he, he made in this chapter and that kind of shows that th this is really scary. Even Luffy himself looked like he was scared. Like, he legit was scared, and he was like, we gotta get the fuck out, because fighting Big Mom head-to-head -head is just not something that they're currently capable of doing. From what we have seen from Big Mom from the flashbacks, it's already made her feats even more ridiculous. This girl, th th this woman now, Big Mom, what she has done and what she continuously does, she has just gained more power throughout the years, and there's just no way Luffy's group and Capone can face her, especially when Big Mom's family is there to fight with her. So, no, there there's nothing they can do. So they need to get the hell out. But the thing is, there's no escape plan. So how the hell, how, how the hell are they going to get out is the question. But here's the thing, though, that we need to talk about, and that is Capone in his 
Big Father. So, I really like that. I don't know if Oda was doing that kind of ironically or whatever, or he tried to intentionally do that. But, I like how Big Mom is going to be pretty much going up against Big Father. Because Capone, he's using the ability which is, like, called Big Father. And then, you know, Big Mom. It's kind of funny. Big Father, Big Mom going up against each other. But, the man looks, like, straight up a castle. Like, this big-ass walking castle. Like, he's... Something from Howl's Moving Castle or something. I'm like, yo, this man looks freaking awesome and stuff. I really love the design on him. Like, Capone's design with his castle, like Big Father, looks really cool. I gotta commend Oda where that is due because that is a really nice design. But I'm kind of curious on how well that can hold up against Big Mom in general. I highly doubt it'll be able to tank a lot of blows from her. I mean, after everything we have seen... For instance, what she has done to a giant by just slapping a giant, like trying to slap a mosquito. I highly doubt Capone's, like, you know, big father is going to be able to withstand Big Mom's attacks when she finally goes on the initiative to start attacking. I don't think he's going to be able to hold out that long. However, when it comes to, you know, her subordinates and all that, all the people part of the Big Mom Pirates, I can see it probably tanking a couple of blows. Even then, though, even though he has this probably durability to survive some attacks, does he have the mobility, though? Does he have the mobility to be able to get out of there on time or get out of there before Big Mom turns her attention over and it's like, we're going to kill your ass? Will he be able to get out of there? That is the question I have. Maybe Capone has a mirror or something inside of that. I mean, that's a possibility. I could definitely see that. Maybe Capone has backup mirror inside of him and he's going to use that to get out. Who knows? So yeah, overall, chapter of One Piece this week, a very good chapter, added a lot of clarification of why Big Mom acts like she does, another solid chapter that was really good, been loving One Piece quite a bit recently, like, this is, this is a really good flashback arc we've been having, like, oh my god, it's really, really good, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below, please be safe, chibi out.